I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to be talking about the decisions that expats or potential expats may need to make around the ideas of residency or citizenship. And I think a lot of people who are looking at becoming expats or maybe beginning that journey, just starting to think about where they may want to go and how they may want to look at their future life. Of course, many may be looking at retirement, but many may be looking at working or other concerns. They may not be aware that they need to look at these two very different aspects of potential expatry because no one ever talks about them as a comparison. And it's a really important thing to think about because how you decide to do this and, and what approach you take will change almost everything about your expat experience. So we're gonna get to that right after the bump. Before we get too deep into comparing things, we wanna talk about exactly what these definitions are. So a citizen is a person who is a legal citizen of a country, meaning that they get a passport, they probably get to vote, all kinds of things. They're very much a part of a country. Of course, every country does have different citizenship rules and becoming a citizenship can be easy or hard, uh, quick or long, and may give you tons of benefits or not being natural, may give you very limited benefits. Every country is unique and there is nothing that says that countries have to do what other countries do. So of course, they're sovereign and they can, they can approach it any way that they want. But all countries in the world share Share the one commonality that their citizens are who are able to get passports. Whatever it is they define as citizenship, that is what allows passports to be given. And so all the other countries, when they recognize a country, recognize their mechanism of passports. So they then allow uh, citizens of that country to move around being identified as a member of that country. So if you're an American, as an example, you have the right to get an American passport. If you are a citizen of uh, Indonesia, you can get an Indonesian passport. Now, what those passports allow you to do is dependent on the countries you want to go to, not the country that you're coming from. I mean, they make that determination based on where you're coming from. But if South Africa is going to accept an American passport with no visa, that is completely up to South Africa, not the United States. And if South Africa is going to accept one from Indonesia uh, or make you jump through extra hoops, again, completely up to South Africa. So every country maintains a list of how they treat passports from every other country. Some of them put them into big lists, some are very individualized. So that is that is what it means to be a citizen. And a lot of people uh, get excited when talking about becoming an expat because they want to get a passport. And so you see a lot of this, that people are going out and talking about the importance of a passport in everything that they're doing. It's a, it's a reason that they're looking at becoming expats uh, in many cases. With citizenship, you get a lot of power, but it's a really big commitment and it's unlikely that you're going to go out and get a lot of citizenships. Like that's just not a complex, uh, not a simple thing for you to have many of. Some people have two, some people even have four, but getting 20 would be really, really difficult. Residency, on the other hand, is not an internationally recognized concept. Some countries may say things like, well, depending on where you're resident, but the concept of residency isn't international. What one country considers to be residency doesn't mean another country will consider that same thing to be residency. It's really all over the place and very, very different. And so it's a internal mechanism. Not every country even has residency. And even within a country, residency may not be recognized the same by all departments within the government. This is complex, but it's because it's a non-official thing. It doesn't come with a passport. It doesn't mean anything specific. Citizenship means something very specific. It means that you are uh, belonging to a country. But residency suggests a kind of, well, you stay there a bit. But of course, tourists stay there a bit. They're not normally considered residents. And uh, often people stay somewhere a lot and don't get official residency, even if they live there full time. And so concepts of residency can be extremely complicated, uh, mostly when dealing internationally, because what one, when someone says they want residency or they have residency or they are a resident, it can mean different things in different situations. Situations. And if I said I am a resident of 
I live in Nicaragua. If I said I'm a resident of Nicaragua uh, to the Nicaraguan government, they w- one department would say, no, I'm afraid you're not. You have to do these things to become a resident. Another department would say, yes, you've been a resident absolutely by the law since long ago. And the United States would say, ah, yes, no, you are a resident of Nicaragua. Or as far as we're concerned, not the United States. They don't know where you're a resident of. I mean, they probably know, but they don't care. They only care that you're not a resident of the United States. So it's a completely weird thing. But their date of when I became not a resident of the United States was much, very long after Nicaragua considered me to be a resident by one department and long before I'd become a resident by another department. So every country and even within it has very different definitions. And when you're talking to people casually, if you're talking about your legal status, what you mean by being a resident probably means one thing. And when you're talking casually, what are you, what country are you a resident of? It would be another if you went by, if and, and you can kind of prove this, right? If you said, to where, where is Scott resident of? You would say, well, he lives full time every single day in Nicaragua. That is the place of his residence. But if you wanted to know if I was a resident here, well, according to the United States, I'm simply not a resident of my home country of the United States. They don't know what my status is in Nicaragua. They don't know how long I'm in Nicaragua. They probably do. Again, officially they don't, but I'm sure they do. Uh, but as far as they're concerned, I could be in Guatemala, I could be in Honduras. They don't track that officially, and and it doesn't matter to them because as long as I'm not in the United States, that's what matters. As far as Nicaragua, one department, again, would say, yes, clearly you're a resident, and another would say, absolutely no, you're not a resident. And so it's very, very fungible depending on the conversation. But if so, if you're having a conversation with someone and they want to know your residency as it applies to laws then you're probably going to talk about a government department's opinion of residency. But if you're talking about where you live, which could be the same sentence, right, exactly the same sentence, of what country are you resident or where do you live, right? That's what being resident means in English. But then there's this potential but not uniform legal definition. So it gets really complicated. So that's an important underpinning that should be understood that when you're talking about citizenship, it is an extremely discreet, internationally recognized concept that applies to literally every recognized country in the world. Now, if you're talking about places that are not recognized, like Somaliland, uh, then their concept of citizenship is very much like residency. And it is kind of like, well, they say, he said, she said, and it's uh, you don't know. But when you're talking about uh, universally recognized states, India, uh, the uh, Dominican Republic, uh, China, right, their citizenship is, is universally standardized. Everyone knows what it means, and it's all the same thing. Now, it's important because of what I just said, people will often get very confused when talking about citizenship. So in many cases, they will simply confuse it for residency. That's a big deal. And also they will often, and I will probably get it wrong in this video at some point and say the wrong thing. That is completely possible uh, because they they are words that are easy to get mixed up. Um, And often people will say they want residency because they want to get citizenship and they think that residency is part of the path to getting citizenship. But because residency has no universal definition, there are times that that is true. There's many countries that you would move to. And if you want to become a citizen, you must be a resident first. But there are also places like Nicaragua where residency doesn't have any realistic uh, modality of being on the path to citizenship. And it's true. If you're going to become a citizen, which is extremely unlikely, then chances are you're going to be resident first. But it's not a thing that necessarily has to happen. It's not like there's an official path to to citizenship in any realistic way. For normal people, if you're a child of Nicaraguans, of course, there's exceptions, right? There are definitely ways to become a citizen in Nicaragua, but most of them are not going to apply to expats who are simply looking at leaving their home country. Now, when you're looking at moving abroad, and this came up because, um, you know, I'm American and I'm an American citizen. And as an American citizen, we have a really uh, uh, heavy, robust tax regime that makes it very difficult for us to live abroad because we have to continue to file and pay taxes in the United States. Even if we're not working, you still have to do a bunch of paperwork. It's a bunch of effort to be an American abroad. But our concepts of being abroad are very clean cut. And actually, the United States does an excellent job with making clear definitions of what it means to be non-resident in the United States and, and what that means as far as taxes. And while we don't like how many taxes we have to pay, the mechanism for knowing 
when it affects you or doesn't is very black and white and no one should be confused by it. It is super straightforward and it's logical on, t on top of that. Like if you were to sit down and say, how would I want to define non-resident in the United States as far as at least its implications by the tax system? Because you, still, you always have to pay taxes. This is the weird thing is you're always taxable, but they have a a resident system within the tax code that determines what type of taxes you pay or how much. It's very strange. But the way that it works, not the names for things, but the way that it works actually makes an extreme amount of sense and is quite good for the most part. So as Americans, we have a tendency to see uh, citizenship and residency through a lens of we always have to pay, but we have a really logical system for dealing with it. But a number of times, and today it came up, uh, and someone mentioned to me that for Canadians, they do have a pretty good ability to get away from taxes, but the system for doing it is not black and white. It is very fungible. It is completely the opinion of the government at any given time. It changes all the time um, and is incredibly onerous and weird. Uh, and, and so it's a good reminder of there are really good reasons to want to get out of Canada, possibly more than wanting to get out of the U.S. It's amazing living abroad how much you hear from Canadians and how awful it is. As Americans, we're constantly getting, the, you know, well, Canada, it's got some downsides, but mostly it's a friendlier, safer version of America. But the reality is, is that Canadians are like, no, mostly it's a worse version of America. And things have become so costly. Living is so hard. Jobs are so difficult. Everything is so politicized. Uh, that at least Canada is very, it, as far as being like the U.S., they've made themselves so much more like the U.S., they may have become the new U.S. in the region, um, at least getting very close to it, if not surpassing it in those kinds of ways. So Canadians are really interested in getting away. And that's what made me think about this topic. Of course, I'm aware of this topic all the time, but Canadians have to do a lot of work to try to convince their government that they're resident somewhere else. And getting residency somewhere doesn't necessarily help and that's important. Same thing with the United States. Ours, at least, is very clear cut, and they're very straightforward. Oh, someone else gave you residency? We don't care. That's irrelevant. Okay, moving on. But with Canada, it's it should be irrelevant, but is it? And the answer is no one knows because they're capricious and random. And so it's all up to the opinion of some government official who simply has control of your life. At least this is how it's portrayed to me. And it's a relatively scary situation. And so people want to distance themselves as much as possible from Canada but I'm not sure, and this is important, I don't believe that getting residency in Nicaragua will have any bearing on that whatsoever. And if you needed it to have a bearing on that, then the Nicaraguan law, which is Lay 822, does have under, I believe it's Section 7, Part 2, but that's I'm completely going from memory. Uh, they do have their definition in the tax code. That law is the tax code uh, for what a resident is, and that resident becomes automatic at 181 days in Nicaragua period, end of story. And it's not used anywhere. It's not tax resident. It never says the words tax resident. It says resident in reference to the tax code, which is similar to, ta I, mean, I can see why people would think that that means tax resident, but that those words never get said in the tax code. We've searched on it. They don't exist. So it's purely residency as defined by that department of the government. So this is where it gets weird that the tax office, DHEE, and, and INS, I believe it's both together, define residency as an automated thing, you cannot escape it. 181 days in country, boom, you are a resident by the tax system, but not a tax resident. We don't have that concept as far as we can tell. But the, the immigration services, Migración, recognizes a resident as something different that you have to apply for and you have to get approved for, and then you get a visa for residencia. And that is a, that is a different thing. And so... If the government of Canada specifically asks you, are you a resident under Migración, if you didn't have that paperwork, you'd be forced to say, no, I am not currently a resident under that, but I could go get it, presumably. But if they simply asked, are you a resident? Oh, yes, both in the English language, I'm living in Nicaragua, and in the uh, legal sense, oh, yes, according to Lay 822, the tax code says, I am a resident, not a tax resident, but a resident. Good enough. That's probably all you need. So you'd need to stay 181 days in order for the government of Nicaragua to have a law that declares you a resident. It doesn't give you any rights. So this is really important. The thing that gives you the rights from Migración 
One is that they say so, but more importantly, they issue you a residency at Visa, and it is the Visa that gives you all the powers and rights and things that you need and that people worry about and are interested in, not the actual title of being a resident. So while you get the title of resident from the tax code, you don't get any of the benefits that you want. So that you still need to go through immigration and do all those things, but should you need to declare it to the Canadian government, you should be all set because under the English language, yes, and under the law, yes. So you're good. In theory, depending on what they say. Just trying to give you some tools for the Canadians to help with that. But because of this, it brought up the idea that basically Canadians are fearful that even just speaking English or being seen as English speakers or being in a country with too many other Canadians might, and these are pretty far-fetched, but these things might trigger Canada to say, oh yeah, no, you're not actually gone from Canada. Maybe you're too physically close, you're in the same time zone. Maybe these things make you too close to Canada. Canada can say anything they want and declare you, right? Uh, and so the problem with being a citizen of the U.S. is that they can tax you wherever you are in the world and they can recall you. They basically, you are the property of your country. It's a terrible thing in the current world, but this is the way it works. Citizenship is you are the property of a country. And with Canadians, right right now, Canada has one system for taxes, but in the future they can easily say, and people are afraid that they're heading down this path, they can say anywhere in the world, ah, we've decided wherever you live or whatever thing we want, makes you taxable and they can keep taxing you. They can tax you on your income from Canada, your income from abroad, anything that they want, right? Because you are their property. That is the way that people are seen in the modern world as purely owned property without rights, uh, except for the law, but the law can be changed at any time and they're helpless before that. The one thing that allows you to change that is getting citizenship somewhere else. And this is what brings me to the, that was a very long-winded setup, but it's things that people need to understand. It may be of interest, especially for Canadians. For Americans, it is not nearly as interesting because the system is so straightforward, because giving up our citizenship is all but impossible. There are huge tax burdens with leaving. There's a lot of reasons. The U.S. works very hard to keep people from ever not becoming U.S. citizens, but at least they make being a citizen not the worst thing. Um, Canada makes being a citizen so undesirable that it may easily create a situation where you may want to obtain a secondary citizenship and renounce your Canadian. So stick with me. If you're looking at trying to get away from Canada and you want to be able to have all these things that make you a resident somewhere else, you're basically in a situation of having to distance yourself from Canada so completely that you probably can never visit it or do anything or maybe not even have family stay there. Just like in the US, we can only visit a very small amount while we're resident somewhere else. The US basically bans us from our own country. It's not quite that extreme, but it's essentially what happens. Uh, if you're going to be resident somewhere else from the view of the United States. You're always allowed to be resident in the United States and resident somewhere else. And that's another thing. You're always able to have overlapping residencies because the residency of one place doesn't affect your residency of another because they're not relatable concepts. They can't look it up. Um, but for a lot of the Canadians and a lot of other people as well, just people who are in this situation who need to create this distance or have some need like this, it may be important to consider that the thing that you may be looking for is citizenship somewhere rather than residency. So here in Nicaragua, we are a residency country, meaning for expats, Nicaragua has an extremely attractive, one of the absolute most attractive on the planet residency systems. If you want to be a foreign resident, Nicaragua is your place. But if you want to be a citizen of another place, if your goal is to obtain another passport, then both Nicaragua has essentially no path for you to become a citizen and it does not have a passport that you'd want. Every single person who has said this to me has had two delusions. One is that by getting residency, they would become a citizen over time, which is absolutely false. And that Nicaragua had a passport that would give them a bunch of power, which is absolutely false. As an American, if I was to be given a Nicaraguan passport, while I would be very honored that the country of Nicaragua would bestow such an award upon me because it is a very rare thing, there are a handful of people who are able to get this. So this is quite an achievement, but it wouldn't grant me the ability to visit other countries or travel the world or do anything that I'm not already able to do with my American passport. Of the places that it would potentially give me more power, those places normally demand that if I'm an American, that I must present my American passport and show that I'm, yes, Nicaraguan, but also something else. And so 
that kind of negates almost any benefit you could have from the passport. Now, the thing that you could have as a citizen, and this is a reason that people would potentially want it, is that if there was a situation ever where they started kicking people out of the country, oh, there's been overrun by a zombie apocalypse, there's just not enough brains to eat, whatever the situation, if they had to lock down the country, citizens get to stay because this is their country, right? They're, they're, they're the ones doing the lockdown, but residents and tourists and immigrants, all the people who are not citizens are on the potential list for you've got to go, right? There's always that possibility. Now, can a country start ejecting citizens in theory? But it's a very complicated thing because then you get into a, well, all these people are equal. How do you kick people out, right? And, uh, of course, every country has some amount of dealing with the need to get rid of people who are citizens. And so the mechanisms exist, but it's a very complicated thing. It's a very far-fetched thing for that to start happening. Whereas for a, uh, a resident, it is as simple as uh, border control saying, ah, we've decided that you're no longer a resident and that's it and you're done, right? And that's anywhere in the world, right? That is just the way residency works. So residency is a much more ephemeral thing, and there's a reason why you have to renew it. Citizenship, you never have to renew. Citizenship can be revoked. In Nicaragua, they allow you, if you are a non-natural citizen, you can revoke your citizenship simply by entering Nicaragua on the passport of another country. It is that simple. You just voluntarily come in and show yourself as being another uh, citizen, and they're like, oh, okay, you're not a citizen anymore if that's what you want, and it's just automatic. Like, it's that easy to, to choose to revoke your Nicaraguan citizenship. But the United States, for example, it's all but impossible. And during COVID, it was actually impossible. They shut down the ability to renounce your citizenship. So uh, for a lot of people, there's this feeling that uh, residency does something that it doesn't. And for a lot of other people, there is this need for uh, citizenship, and they may be looking at the wrong place. So each country uh, has a mix of what they offer. And some countries offer nothing. But a lot of countries will offer residency, like Nicaragua, and many, uh, like Panama or Paraguay, offer really good paths to citizenship. And it's important when you're looking at where you want to live as an expat, not as a tourist, not as a digital nomad, if those are the worlds that you're working in, then you really don't care. Uh, you are not going to be going for citizenship, but you do need either uh, you know, a digital nomad visa, residency, long-term tourist visa that allows you to work, whatever. But it's none of this really matters for you. You, it, you know, Each country is going to have their own approach to being a remote worker, to being a digital nomad, to being a tourist, any of those things. But when you're going to be an expat, when you're actually going to move to a country and call it your home, either temporarily or permanently, then the ideas of residency, eternal tourist, uh, or citizenship, becoming a citizen, are all things you have to think about very carefully. And for so many people, they think, well, one of the things I want is the ability to have a second passport or a third passport. Um, and having a Panamanian passport is quite good. Having a Brazilian passport is quite good. Having a European passport, extremely good. Or a Swiss passport, extremely good. Um, and so the countries where you can get those passports are highly desirable by people who are looking to become citizens of those countries. Uh, but that can be very time consuming. Um, often it requires many years, not always, but often it is a great deal of investment, uh, whether it's just buying a house, living in a place for a long time, getting a job, putting in a number of years. Sometimes like in Switzerland, you have to live like 12 years in a village and then get your village to vote on you. Like crazy amounts of stuff that have to be done. And you take a great risk. You put in a huge portion of your life and then find out if that country is going to take you in many cases. Whereas others like Paraguay or Panama have relatively straightforward, relatively reliable and quite quick processes to getting a secondary passport and becoming a citizen of those countries. A lot of people consider those because it allows them to get a reasonably powerful passport, maybe not as powerful as the place that they're coming from, but it gives them the power that they know that they can go to Panama, go to Paraguay and stay indefinitely. They never have to leave ever. They never have to renew. They never have to file. They never have to do anything. That is a country that they live in. But of course, now they fall under the tax regimes of those countries as well. So you have to look into that. Are you affected when you're away, when you're distant? With Nicaragua or with anywhere, with residency, it doesn't affect your taxes, not residency on its own. Other things might, right? Because you're in the country might do it, uh, you know, but, but if you are a resident of a country, and then you go do, you completely leave that country, that residency, any taxes that are associated with that country, they don't follow you long term, right? You're, you're able to go. Citizenship stays with you forever. You can be recalled. Residents can't be recalled, right? It's one of the reasons why your 
less safe. You don't have the protections of this is your country that you cannot have it taken away, but you also don't have the fear of, and they can stop me from leaving. Right, so it's a very, it's a both sides are given up some control um, when it, when it's residency and with citizenship, it's much more locked in. Everyone's taking a much bigger commitment. So for a lot of people, especially retirees, but a lot of expats in general, should probably very carefully sit down and say, what is it you're looking for abroad? Are you simply looking for a way to live in paradise and you want to be able to work remotely and you want some flexibility and probably you want to settle down? You're not 100% sure, but you don't need a secondary passport. You're okay keeping the one you have or, or being limited to the one that you have. Then residency countries are probably the ones that make sense. And Central America is very good for residency. Nicaragua especially leans towards residency, not citizenship. So if residency is what you want, and the really good residency system is what is drawing so many people to look at Nicaragua in the first place. But it's very important to understand that that's what you're looking at, not citizenship, because often people are confused. But the residency here is so good. Of course, the weather is beautiful. It's a wonderful country with great food. People are friendly. It's very safe. There's all these reasons why Nicaragua is a great place to end up and live. But the thing that puts it on people's radar is very often that it is very low cost of living and that it is so essentially just open and automatic to at least beginning the process of residency. And you, you never have to really be in a situation normally where you're worried about whether you get to stay forever. Normal people just all get to stay. Um, and it, under residency, not under residency, like there's just so much that Nicaragua does to make it a welcoming place that you get to come and stay. And that's totally not the case in most countries. Most countries that have decent residency, even Costa Rica, is not nearly as welcoming as Nicaragua. It's very welcoming. As a tourist destination, it's absolutely just as open as basically anywhere else. But as a residency country, well, no, it's definitely not as open as Nicaragua. And when it comes to citizenship, everyone's completely different. Places like Panama, their residency is not so strong, right? If you just want to have residency in, in Panama, eh, it's not the best system for that. But if you want citizenship, it's by far the best in the region. It is a place that people go to specifically because they want a powerful Panamanian passport. They want that to be their home base. They want to know that it's their, it's their tax center. And maybe they want to give up whatever passport they had before. They just want, they just want to be uh, part of Panama because it, it is a very good country to have a passport from. It's good to be Panamanian, right? And that's a difference, right? No matter how long I am a resident of Nicaragua, I am an American who is a long-term resident or a permanent resident of Nicaragua, but I'm never a Nicaraguan. But if you go and get citizenship in Panama, you switch from being a tourist or a visitor or whatever to actually being Panamanian. You may not be Panamanian by culture, so you have to be careful how you use it. It's kind of like being, uh, you know, you're German, like there's the German, the people who are Germans, and then there's the people who live in Germany, both use the term, the, the demonstrative, uh, no, the demonym of German. And so it gets very confusing, but, or you could say the same thing in the Americas, right? Only the uh, Native Americans are actually Americans, and all the people who come from the United States they're called American, but they're not American by culture. They're only American by citizenship. It's very, right, all those words get very complicated, but you can say you're Panamanian uh, in those cases, whereas here, I can never say I'm Nicaraguan, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter which thing you're looking at, I never get to say it. But there, when someone says, what's your passport, what's your nationality? I'm Panamanian. So uh, for a lot of people, this is a big decision, and, and citizenship is a huge decision. But many people, when they're looking at moving abroad, just want the flexibility, just want the, the place to go. They want, and, and really, this might be 50-50, right? It surprises me how much these are two such completely different approaches and how you kind of randomly get people going both directions and how much people don't even think about that there's these two really discrete processes for living abroad, and they kind of just haphazardly fall into them. But residency is, you know, most of the people on my channel, you're looking at residency because that's why you came to my channel. And people who are looking for citizenship probably moved away from Nicaragua as a, as a place that they were looking at prior to finding my channel. But we talk about the whole region and, and being an expat in a much larger sense. And when it comes to deciding on the countries that you want to consider for your expatting, how they treat the thing that you want to do is key. I can tell you all day long about how great Nicaragua is, why it's a good choice for expats, why it's perfect for digital nomads. And then all it takes is you saying, oh, no, 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 I need to get a passport. Did I not mention that? And instantly it's like, why are we even talking about Nicaragua? It's off the table. 
right? It's unfortunate that because it is a great country and you probably would like it, but it doesn't work for you. You need to go to, and here's the list, basically everywhere is better for citizenship than Nicaragua, right? Because almost everywhere will let you get it eventually. In Nicaragua, there's very little chance that you would get it eventually. It's possible. It happens. I have friends who've had it happen, but it's rare, super rare. Um, and, and so you want to look at places that are probably very easy for citizenship, unless you have some really strong draw to someplace that is hard, but as long as it's doable, okay. Um, so that is the thing you really need to think about. What are your goals? And for the Canadians out there, maybe consider that citizenship abroad may give you the power to sever yourself from Canada in a way that it's possible. Residency or permanent uh, tourism or whatever we use here may not, simply because it's the only thing that guarantees you have a way to sever your link to Canada. Canada will always be a threat that they are going to decide any factor in your life your accent, your age, your hair color, your skin color, any of those things might be something they suddenly decide are a factor that is going to make you have to retain paying taxes in Canada, that you may be beholden to Canada for who knows what things, that you're gonna be drafted into the armed forces or whatever. All those things remain a threat, even if they're very far-fetched, as long as you are only a resident. But if you are a citizen somewhere else and you give up, your Canadian citizenship, then you're guaranteed that Canada has, no, you're, same as with me, Canada can't say anything to me, I'm not Canadian, they can't say anything to you. If you have that second citizenship, but don't renounce your Canadian citizenship, you still have created the strongest possible severance with Canada, and you have the threat of renouncing your Canadian citizenship that at least gives you the peace of mind that if they were to do something really crazy and say, oh, we've changed our minds and we're completely out of you out of whack and doing something absolutely nutty, you go, you know what? Okay, that's that's the straw. Renounce. I already have my other citizenship. I don't even need to go back. Done. I'm out of here. Right. That power, maybe it's just peace of mind for you. Um, but I think it's something that people need to consider more. The people that I talk to that are coming to Nicaragua because we're a residence country. So I talk to people who are either confused or are wanting residency or they think they want residency. But if I lived in Panama, we would have exactly the opposite experience. Nearly everyone you would speak to would be talking about citizenship and you say, oh no, I'm just looking for residency. They'd be like, oh, why'd you pick Panama? Right. And not that I love Panama. Like I, I used to live there and it's a great country, but the benefits of residency in Nicaragua are so much stronger than in Panama that if you're really evaluating the region, sure, there's lots of reasons what you, your answer might be because I really love Panama City and this is where I want to be. Hey, good enough, but I don't want to be a citizen. Okay, then residency in Panama is the path you should pursue. But if you're leading from a who gives me really good residency, then Nicaragua is going to be right at the top of that list. And if Who's going to give me really good citizenship? Panama's going to be right at the top of that list. And it's interesting that we're so close with just Costa Rica in between. This region is really good at attracting people from the outside. But this stuff applies all over South America, all over Central America, Mexico. All of them have some mix of residency and citizenship offerings. And you need to evaluate those one by one and see what makes sense for you. But probably before you look at those, you need to sit down and think to yourself, which things matter because for a lot of us like my family citizenship is completely non-important we have citizenships that we want they're very powerful and we don't have a real benefit to getting an additional one and so it's not a big deal but if we didn't have really good citizenships already or we had the canadian citizenship fear problem that seems to be going on or that people seem to be relaying to me then we may be very adamant about uh, trying to get another citizenship and we may have not come to nicaragua for exactly that reason we may have chosen europe or panama or something like that uh, because we wanted a solid path or at least to be on the way so we had the option in the future to quickly get citizenship in one of those countries your everyone's situation your situation is going to vary and be very unique so before you look at countries sit down and really think about whether you need citizenship and for a lot of people would you even consider citizenship for half of you it's going to be oh my gosh i i gotta have that that's that's a non-starter if i can't get that and for the other half of you you're like i don't care if it's the easiest thing ever i won't accept it that's pretty much the two camps i know there's some people in the middle but a lot of you are going to go just way to one side or the other get that mentally under your under your cap and say, okay, this is defining my search for the right country, right? Yeah, I'm here in Nicaragua, but when it comes to being an expat or digital nomad or moving abroad and relocating and, and starting a new life, 
really, we should be looking at lots of countries. I just think Nicaragua should be on your short list. But looking at it from a broad sense, yeah, you should be evaluating many, many different countries. I've lived in eight, and then I came back to Nicaragua. I've visited nearly 40, lived in eight, researched tons, and continue to travel and do research for you guys. I'm really interested in this subject, but you need to do a certain amount of groundwork to define what it is that a country should deliver for you. Then we can sit down and talk on the show virtually about which countries provide those things the best. Thanks for joining me, like, and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com buy slash Scott Allen Miller, or you can hit that Google thanks button down there below. That's new. Uh, and as always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Get someone to join. Get them to check out an episode or whatever. Ask your questions below. I keep forgetting to say that. Definitely scroll down and ask questions or send them in by video. That would be fantastic. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And just for fun, four videos on the screen. If you wouldn't mind, just give one a click. Let it run in the background if you don't want to watch it. It helps us a lot.